Well, the thing with the Earth is that we know a lot about the surface of it, right? That's where we live. If you were to shrink the Earth down to about the size of an apple, the crust portion would be about as thick as the skin. And we have never gone deep enough to do more than even just scratch the surface of that skin. So, Pete. Yes. It feels like it's been a while since uh, the craze that is sweeping the nation and the world, the What If Discuss Trivia Challenge. Oh. We haven't had an episode of that in a while where we put you on the hot seat <laughs> and test your knowledge of, in this case, deep, deeply mysterious scientific matters. Uh, how deep do you believe it, the Earth is to the core? To the core. So not the mantle. No, not the, yeah, that's a good point. Because you could be talking the crust. We All could be way. talking the mantle right to the core. Uh, I'm going to take a guess in miles. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say 5,000 miles. Well, actually, it is in the area code, but it is, and that's actually a pretty good guess. It's actually uh, 6,000 kilometers, 63, give or take. So knowing that, what is the deepest that you believe we, the humans, have gone or drilled. This one, uh, your pop quiz, you can't stump me on this one because this is actually one of our more popular what ifs uh, at Underknown. And it was, uh, what if you dug the deepest hole in the world? Or what if you fell down the deepest hole in the world? It was the Kola Super Deep Borehole. That is correct. Right? 12 kilometers. 12 kilometers. Which, before I knew how deep the actual earth was. I was like, 12 kilometers? That's gotta be to That's the core. That's crazy. <laughs> and then when you find out that it's about 6,300 kilometers to the core and you sort of do some quick math, you realize we're not even, it's like 0.2%. Oh yeah, we've barely scratched the surface. If the earth is like this, we've only dug like that that deep. So if anyone, and, and to that point, I mean, we've explored space and we continue to explore space. And we continue to talk about space, but... There's obviously a lot to better understand about the planet that we live on currently. And there's not a lot of people who would probably have a good guess as to what might happen if we explored the deepest parts of the Earth. But again, somebody that will, a good friend of the show. Oh, yeah. Host of Angry Planet and multiple other shows in the Science Channel yeah. joins us again today. George Karunas. George, how are you? Hey, George. Hey, guys. Good to be here. So it is, again, as Peter said, we've kind of just scratched the surface. So you have an explorer spirit. Peter mentioned earlier how, you know, how little we know, let's say, about the inner Earth. And we've only drilled 10 kilo or 12 kilometers deep. What do you believe? And I mean, not just believe subjectively, but what, you, what do you and your colleagues in the world of science and exploration believe we were we are going to find if we could go deeper into the earth well the thing with the earth is that we know a lot about the surface of it right that's where we live if you were to shrink the earth down to about the size of an apple the crust portion would be about as thick as the skin and we have never gone deep enough to do more than even just scratch the surface of that skin. Wow. And that really helps to sort of put things in perspective. Most of our planet that we live on, that's been here for over 4 billion years or so, uh, we know nothing about, or not nothing about, we can only make educated guesses about. We have no ability to see deep into the Earth. We can only measure reflections from earthquakes and hypothesize about what's going on down there. And we've learned a lot. We know basically what's going on down there. But the thing is, we don't know the things that we don't know. So there's all kinds of untold mysteries yet to be discovered in inner space. Mm. Yeah, inner space. Uh, the exploration that's happened uh, digging into the Earth was uh, sort of similar to the exploration of space, like uh, sort of the Cold War, U.S. versus USSR. Um, give us a bit of background on that history and, and also maybe what projects are going on in the name of science that are looking to go deeper? There's lots of cool stuff going on underground. Uh, last year, 
I was up in Sudbury, Ontario, and I was two kilometers underground in an active nickel mine. And there, there's the uh, neutrino observatory, the Snow Lab neutrino observatory down there. I, w- I went down that a few years ago, George, actually, for another thing what we were doing there, not w- related with what if, but it was, I mean, talk about that elevator ride down two kilometers. <laughs> Just getting to this lab is unbelievable. You, you have to go into an active mine, get dressed up with the mining helmets, the whole works. You get into this elevator that just drops and drops and drops at such incredible speeds. Your, your ears are popping. You get down there and then you have to walk through this dirty mine to get to the lab. And the lab is established as a clean room. So you have to strip naked, take a shower, you put on special clean clothes, and then you're allowed into the facility. And they study neutrinos coming from the sun. They're looking for uh, dark matter and dark energy, the stuff that makes up a lot of the mass of the universe that we don't really understand all that well. So we can learn a lot about the universe and outer space by going into our planet because that, uh, that those two kilometers of rock helps to shield the sensors that are so incredibly sensitive down there. So every now and then a stray neutrino will penetrate through the earth and hit one of their sensors. You're in this technological boom right now, kind of what was like was going on in the Cold War, but instead of trying to compete to go to the moon or to build a better submarine or something, we're, you know, there's, we're, we're looking outwards and we might learn a lot more than we thought. We want to bring you a message from our friends at netsuite.com. Yeah, if you're a business owner, it doesn't matter what type of business necessarily. I mean, you could be could be flying people to the stratosphere in a balloon. A balloon to the stratosphere. That's a business. Uh, we're not going to tell you how to run your business because we're not business experts. No this idea. isn't a business show. Mm. But what we can tell you is you might be making it harder on yourself than it needs to be. Yeah, that's right. So don't let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. It's time to upgrade to NetSuite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. Like Pete said, it's 2021. Get rid of the old spreadsheets. Get rid of the old school, outdated software. Right. Upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. It's the world's number one cloud business system. Yeah. NetSuite gives you control and visibility over your financials, your HR, your inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Yeah. And it's tried and true. It's not sort of out of the blue. There's already 20,000 people on the NetSuite cloud, so you won't be alone. Yeah. It's not brand new. It's been around for a long time. Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash what if. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash what if. That's netsuite.com slash what if. George, you talk about going deep and what we can discover. Well, I had to go deep in preparing for the show because this wasn't stuff that I knew about a lot. And of course, um, you come across that we now believe scientifically and initially, please, I was like, George, please tell me I'm, you know, misreading this, that we believe that the core of the earth is 6,000 degrees Celsius, which, wow, that sounds like a big number. But then when you actually remind people that that's hotter than the sun, I was like, what? Like, how could we possibly possible? exist? Yeah. So George, please enlighten us. What is going on there? That's the mind-blowing fact of this whole discussion, really, is that the center of the Earth is as hot as the surface of the sun. And it is. So when, when the Earth formed billions of years ago, all of this mass congealed together thanks to gravity, pulling it all together into this sphere. The heavier elements, like iron and nickel, went to the middle. And it's all, all of it's under pressure. And this tremendous pressure creates a lot of heat. So you've got pressure, You've got friction, the, the, the core of the earth is moving, so you've got that friction creating heat, and you also have the uh, decay of certain radioactive elements creating heat as well. So all of these forces have combined to create this ball of hidden energy, and then the crust where we live is the layer of insulation that is not only keeping us alive, but keeping that sphere cool and it's been cooling for billions of years wow yeah so and here we are just you know living on the surface of it 
every now and then we see a volcano erupt and we get a, we get a reminder of this energy and, and heat that's beneath our feet. But for the most part, we take it completely for granted and don't even realize it. I can't even imagine, like, when if a, if a bowl of soup is too hot for me, I set it aside for five <laughs> minutes, it's cooled down enough. Yeah. The Earth is 6,000 degrees and it's been cooling for millions of years. How hot must it have been? That's some serious insulation we have, too, up here between us and that. Yeah, Thank so it's God. probably the, world's best, insula- the yes. world's best insulation. George, we talked a little bit about how we've explored the depths of the Earth, and uh, you could say we've also explored explored very little of the oceans. Most people say about 90% of the ocean's floors uh, or of the oceans remain undiscovered. Um, Mariana Trench is not necessarily. We know a little bit about that. We've been down and as as far as we know, it's the deepest ocean floor in the world. Um, What else do we know or what else don't we know? There's so much. There's so much. It's hard to get to. Right? The bottom of the Mariana Trench, for example, is about 36,000 feet down. That's about as high as a, as a jet airliner flies. And I had the great pleasure of meeting uh, Don Walsh a few times, and he was on board the Trieste with, the, with uh, Picard. The two of them went down to the bottom in 1960. And just recently, um, we've had a few more submarines go down there. Of course, James Cameron and Victor Vescovo went down there recently with his new submarine, and a Chinese submarine just made it down there for the very first time. So there's been a lot of, of um, attention paid to the Mariana Trench, but there are other deep points in the ocean that may not be quite as deep that we still don't know anything about. We're discovering all kinds of stuff below ground. For example, a number of years ago, I went to this place in Mexico called the Nica Crystal Cave. It took me two years to get permission to go to this place. It's 900 feet underground in the Chihuahua Desert. It was accidentally discovered in a silver mine. They were drilling away and they broke through into a chamber that was about the size of a basketball court and it contained the biggest crystals that anyone had ever seen. Some of them are 10 meters long and weigh 55 tons. Magical. Like tree trunks. And it's so hot down there from that internal heat from from the earth that we had to wear special suits filled with ice packs and a chilled air respirator so that we could survive inside the cave for more than a few minutes at a time. As soon as you step foot inside that cave, you start to die because you're combining the heat of the Sahara Desert plus the humidity of the Amazon jungle. It's almost 100% humidity. So it's absolutely lethal conditions, but it's so beautiful, like Superman's Fortress of Solitude, and nobody knew it was there. Like a geode, hidden underground that you can walk around it. So who knows what else is down there? Wow, take that, Indiana Jones. Wow, that'd be so cool. <laughs> that is nuts, man. I, I honestly, like, I, I, you know, if I had a time machine and I could go back, one of the parts, one part of me says, you know, look, you have no regrets, but the other part of me says, man, I wish I would have been an archeologist or, you know, you know, doing the type of work that you do, because again, There's just so much left to explore and we know so little and it's just nothing. There's nothing like that spirit of discovery and being able to experience something like that. So much more to talk about. Uh, Can you stick around uh, so we can take a deeper dive, if you will? I knew you you were going to say that. Absolutely. There was no way we're getting through this show without me saying that. So uh, so George will be back uh, with us on the other side. But if people want to get the audio link. Well, uh, assuming they're not already listening on audio, they can just stay listening on audio if they are. If you're watching us on YouTube, we'll click that little link below. That'll take you to the extended audio podcast. And we'll hear more about uh, exploring the deepest parts of the earth with Angry Planets, George Karunas. Um, we'll be right back after the break. But before we go, George, where can people follow you and find your work? You can find me at furiousearth.com. All my links are there. And uh, are there some wedding pictures at the... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, for, for those people who don't know, George, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong because it was on Wikipedia, but did you honestly get married uh, on, the, on the edge of a crater of an active volcano? An actively erupting, exploding volcano on Tana Island in Vanuatu in the South Pacific uh, back in 2006. 
the volcano was erupting every few minutes with lava flying hundreds of meters through the air while we exchanged our vows. That is, and I'm telling you right now, that would be very difficult to hire a wedding photographer <laughs> for that gig. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say George is the coolest guy I've ever yeah, talked to. That in my is life. certainly, like I said, <laughs> 10 lifetimes right here. For those of you who are ready to go deeper, click on the link, come along for the ride. For those of you who can't, you're going to miss out. But if you have to leave, we'll see you next time on What If Discussed. 